Welcome to the beautiful Kalanyala. Hello, my name is Caden Richards and I'm a descendant of the Bangla people, the First Nations people of the Port Lincoln area. And on behalf of the Bangla tribe, we would like to welcome you to our Yarda. Port Lincoln, seafood capital of Australia and home to the world-renowned Great White Shark tourism industry. Over 10,000 people per year travel from all over the world to see these amazing creatures in their natural habitat from the safety of a metal cage. This activity is only available in a handful of places around the world. I'm so excited about this. This is the top of my bucket list and now I've finally got the opportunity to fulfil it uh, and swim with great white sharks. The industry was pioneered in South Australia by Rodney Fox, a spearfishing champion who was attacked by a great white shark defending his title in 1963. And after his attack, a lot of people uh, thought he'd be afraid to get back in the water and he didn't know what he felt. So he thought the best way to overcome fear is to learn about your attacker. And by building the first cage and organising the first ever film trips, he got to understand the sharks more. It wasn't until a year after Jaws, in, uh, was it released in the cinemas in 1976, uh, was the first paying passengers for great white shark viewing. The cage diving occurs 60 kilometres offshore from Port Lincoln in the open waters of the Neptune Islands Group Marine Park. This site is an internationally renowned aggregation site for great white sharks who are attracted to the area by the large long-nosed fur seal population. There's not many places in the world when you see these white sharks all year round and many other locations has a very seasonal aggregation. At the Neptunes you see them all year round which is amazing. However, it's not the same sharks there all the time. The marine park is named after Ron and Valerie Taylor ex spearfishing champions turned filmmakers and conservationists. The live shark scenes in the movie Jaws were filmed by the Taylors in the surrounding waters in the 1970s. Their work has brought ocean awareness to the world. I would like to see people enjoying themselves in the marine parks. It starts as you leave Port Lincoln through the sheltered waters of Boston Bay. The sun is rising and excitement fills the air. Soon you are heading past Lincoln National Park, one of the oldest national parks in South Australia. Its eucalypt and she-oak woodlands and rugged coastal habitats are home to a range of species, such as mallifowl, goannas and kangaroos. As you progress on your journey, you are likely to encounter marine mammals, such as dolphins, and the world's rarest seal, the Australian sea lion. An endangered species only found in South and Western Australia, there's only 12,000 left in the world. You can swim with these majestic creatures in these nearby waters with a local tour operator, an experience that comes highly recommended. And if I could only have one more dive in all my life, I'd choose to go to Hopkins Island out of Port Lincoln and dive with the sea lions because they're full of joy, they make you happy. As you pass Memory Cove and reach Cape Catastrophe, leaving Thorny Passage behind you, you head straight into the full force of the Southern Ocean. And that's when I probably see the most heightened sense of fear in some people, sitting down low at the water level, watching waves come up above the window. So be prepared and take those travel sickness tablets early. As you venture into these deeper waters, you may encounter oceanic seabirds and a range of whale and dolphin species. So keep your eyes out, it's all part of the adventure. But once we get to the Neptune Islands, which is an amazing sheltered area, under most weather conditions, we can find somewhere to get out of the way, reduce the roll down, settle into our cage diving, and then we watch the anticipation build and people sort of lift and lift and lift. Attractants are used to encourage the sharks closer to the cage, and passengers come face to face with nature's apex predator. They come out of nowhere, it's crazy. And they're huge, they're a whole lot bigger than I thought they were gonna be. The industry is well regulated by the South Australian Government. It's a leading example of best practice nature-based tourism. So about 10 years ago, the industry changed. Operators started to go to the Neptune Islands more and more frequently. We noticed that the residency of the shark also increased. Because of that, we were worried about the potential effect of the cage diving industry and the managers, scientists and the cage diving industry came together to develop some new regulation to try to mitigate and reduce the effect that it might be having on the sharks. However, there's no point regulating an industry if you cannot check whether those new regulations are working properly or not. 
And this is what we're doing now. We're having a monitoring of the activity of the industry and the residency of the shark to check if the regulation have worked and to ensure that the residency has gone back down to what it used to be like before the industry increased in intensity. But who is this great white shark? It seems that great white sharks are a more recent evolutionary uh, branch of sharks, but even white sharks have been around for millions of years. So white sharks are top predators, meaning that they feed on a variety of different preys and that not too many other species will be feeding on them, and that are considered vulnerable to overexploitation and to human activity. Thankfully, they have now been protected for about 20 years, and this is hopefully helping maintaining and even recovering the population of white sharks. So there's recently been some studies using genetic methods to estimate the population size of white sharks in Australia. And on the southwest population, they estimated the number of adults at about 1,500. They're one of the most well-known, you know, formidable, charismatic animals on the planet. However, they are an incredibly unknown animal, mysterious. Even now, we're not really sure where they go to have their young and breed, how long they live. What I like about that is they still maintain their magic. Scientists have been tracking the movements of white sharks using satellite tags for over 15 years, trying to uncover the mysteries of this migratory species. This has revealed that white sharks migrate through the network of 26 state and commonwealth managed marine parks off South Australia. Whilst females travelled further offshore than males, they found that all sharks had an affinity for the Neptune Islands Group Marine Park. This highlights the importance of marine parks in the conservation of this species. The location of the Neptune Islands Group Marine Park makes it ecologically unique. Sitting at the entrance to Spencer Gulf, influenced by the warm Lewin current from the west and the cold Flinders current from the east, it is a real mixing pot of diversity. The high level of protection afforded by the North Neptune Islands Sanctuary Zone ensures the protection of not only the sharks and seals, but also the entire ecosystem that connects them at this site. There's about 70 fish species here between North and South Neptunes combined, and uh, lots of different reef fish, and also some that are associated with seagrass and sand habitats. You can see a uh, lot of trevallies, you can see leather jackets, you can see blue throat wrasse, uh, southern eagle rays, smooth rays. So if you actually get a chance to go diving, maybe on the bottom cage, try to not just focus on the white sharks and have a look at all the other species that you might see. Shark cage diving is an important industry to the economy of Port Lincoln. Approximately 70 people are employed in the industry, catering to 10,000 visitors per year. We estimated that the direct revenues from the cage diving industry is about $8 million. On top of that, there's an additional about $8 million, what we call regional expenditure. And when we asked them if they would have come to Port Lincoln if it wasn't to dive with white sharks, most of them answered no. About 85% of the people would never have come here if it wasn't for cage diving. The industry also plays an important role in ocean conservation through education. Wildlife tourism and wild shark cage diving can help improving conservation awareness of people. We've recently done some studies surveying people before they did the tour and after they did the tour, and we found that their understanding of the species, their attitudes, and how much they basically know about sharks and conservation improved and increased as a result of coming on a tour and seeing the sharks in their natural environment. Some people look at our industry and go, three operators, we're the only ones in Australia, how lucky are you? Well, yeah, we are, but with that comes a sense of responsibility. If we're not doing something to change people's perceptions of sharks, if we only show them the Jaws experience, then they're going to come away with a reaffirmation of what they believe in the first place. If we can give people an experience that inspires them to want to protect sharks, then we've done a good job and we've done the right thing by sharks. I've always been an advocate for marine conservation but uh, I think one of my main thing was I got into diving and, and this sort of business is to try and educate a lot more people about what we have and why we need to look after it. I think a lot of people come out thinking that great whites are cold-blooded killers and they're everywhere but then when you're in the water the way they interact, the way they move, the way they look, I think a lot of people actually end up coming out with a totally different concept of the great white and, uh, and what they're about. There's one now. 
And if you come on board with, a, with an open mind and, and not too much of a preconceived idea of, of what it'll be like, don't sit inside the whole time. Actually come out and enjoy the nature. Come out and, and have a chat to the crew. You'll learn so much from it, for sure. It was awesome. I can't, you can't, no words can describe how beautiful it was.